something that I really needed to learn is building a product that was okay and not perfect. Adrian Van Rossum is the founder of Simple Analytics, an alternative to Google Analytics, however, with a full focus on user privacy. He's built his indie business from scratch to his full-time job today. And in this video, he takes us through the whole journey, how he first started it, how he learned what he needed to know to set up and run the business, how it runs today, and his plans for the future. Let's jump right into it. My name is Adrian uh, Van Rossum. Um, I never know how to pronounce it correctly in English, but I think this, uh, this will do. Um, and I have my business and it's called Simple Analytics. So basically it's uh, an, a Google Analytics, but then privacy friendly. And within these times, it's super important uh, to care about privacy because a lot of uh, business don't. So there's definitely a use uh, for businesses that do. Um, and I started when I was like 14 with uh, programming. I think programming is a great skill if you want to build a SaaS product. Um, and I have been yeah, interested in privacy since I started programming because then you can do so many different things um, that you can do. Like you can uh, read the clipboard, like a very old uh, browser, uh, Internet Explorer. Maybe some people know them uh, still. <laughs> they were around for quite a bit. Um, but that was, I think, Internet Explorer 6 or something. And uh, you could even like, uh, yeah, read the clipboard of all your visitors online. And then I, I thought like, yeah, this is, this is bad. Like uh, technology is great. You can do so many things, uh, but you can also read the clipboards from people that's very privacy invasive. So that's where the starting point basically was for my interest in privacy. Um, and like, uh, since then I've been working for uh, bosses. I've been having my own businesses. Uh, but when it really clicked was uh, when I started working on simple analytics. And I think that is because um, my expertise, like, like in development, uh, was linked together with, um, with my passion, and that was privacy. So I think it's great to yeah, uh, have a motivational uh, yeah, um, force within your, within your product you can rely on because there are so many times in your in building a product that you don't really uh yeah have motivation and it's great if you then can get the motivation out of your own uh, passion so what the the job entails i think or the the, the function entails is like so many things like it's it's doing your own sales it's doing your own marketing strategy it's it's building your product it's your building your product in code or no code whatever uh, you prefer um, and there's so many things that you don't know yet. There's always like some kind of uh, thing that's that's outside of your comfort zone. Um, for me, it's doing the sales and marketing. I think for a lot of founders, uh, that is the problem um, or the challenge. And for a lot of other founders, it's it's getting the product out there, um, which is also very very hard if you are detailed oriented uh, like me, for example. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically what you do. You you have to do everything that's inside of your business, and you have to yeah uh, make it fun if you don't uh, enjoy it at that time. And usually, if something is difficult to do, uh, you can always convert it to something that like, hey, I don't know how to do this yet. Let's figure out how we can do this. And for example, at the moment, I'm uh, focusing on on sales and marketing way more than I was in the in the beginning. Uh, I was lucky that I got some. Uh, some uh, yeah exposure on hacker news and stuff like that uh, because I yeah I wrote some blogs uh, some articles uh, but I wasn't really uh, approaching businesses and getting businesses in into my uh, subscriptions uh, and now I'm doing that uh, way uh, way more with way more tools like I I develop myself and it's great to to see that that uh, yeah that it works so it's uh, Especially if something is hard for you and you can make it work, the reward of you doing it finally uh, and it works and, and it works out, that's great. Before you were doing what you're doing now, before you were running Simple Analytics, what were you doing before then? Were you working in 9 to 5? Did you have a full-time job? What was the, the most recent thing you were doing before you were self-employed? Yeah, before Simple Analytics, I was working uh, at, a, at a business as a developer uh, here in Amsterdam. And I was doing uh, not a nine to yeah, it was basically a nine to five job, but then three days a week. Like I never believed in working full time. Um, 
So I also had the advantage of being a programmer. So then you can charge a little bit more um, and have a little bit more free time. So I did that uh, and I uh, used that perks as well to uh, travel around the world. Uh, I was allowed to work remotely. So I lived in uh, Los Palmas uh, for half a year. Um, so that was great. Like that was all possible within that business. Um, and it and it felt okay, but I it also felt like I was missing something. Like I wasn't uh, getting yeah to my full potential. I would say. So uh, yeah, I knew I needed to to run my own business and start on something, you know. But I I yeah I was too comfortable in the situation I was in. So then I um, I realized okay I need to change this, and uh, so I quit my job um, before I had uh, another business. Um, and then I started working on my business and then all of a sudden there was this urge to, to make this business successful because otherwise you don't have income. Um, so I worked very hard on, on simple analytics for two months, uh, and then launched it. And, um, and that was how it started basically. So I was just working for, for a boss, uh, as a front end developer and working for, uh, for them, like, uh, like three days a week. And, uh, and that was it. That's really cool that you ended up being able to travel while still working uh, at a job yeah. and it would give you the time to start setting up your own business, I guess, if you're only working three days a week. That's, that's an ideal scenario to, to transition. Yeah, but the funny part for me was that um, I, didn't, I didn't really start my own business uh, because I was still feeling comfortable with the situation I was in. Yeah. And I really started doing my business when uh, all those, those, those perks were, were gone. Like I didn't have any, any uh, income anymore. And then I started working hard on my own business because I wanted to to succeed. And otherwise, I was always working on the side a little bit. But yeah, I I really I don't believe in side projects that much. But that's uh, that's different for everybody, of course. But for me, it works to throw away your old shoes and then buy new ones very quickly. You're right. It's it's there's no real incentive like not being able to afford food, is there? You really need to make it work <laughs> yeah. then if you are if you have no yeah, other income. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I'm I'm also like uh, uh, I don't have a family. I don't have like uh, responsibilities. So that's mm. also something that uh, should be taken into account, right? Like not everybody can do that. Yeah. Um, but I was in the in the uh, yeah I could do that because of that. I guess when you left your previous job because you hadn't started Simple Analytics, Analytics then, had no. you? So when you left your previous job, what was in your mind? Were you thinking I'll start a business? Did you already have simple analytics in your mind, or were you just thinking I need freedom, I need some time to myself, and then I'll figure out what to do next? Yeah. So when I left uh, my previous uh, role or job, um, I had this. Um, I didn't have any idea what I was doing next. Um, oh. So I went to. Oh yeah. That's a, that's an important factor that I didn't tell you. Like um, I also had like some freelance uh, gigs as well, so I was oh, starting okay. um, uh, working on on those after my job. Um, but those are limited, right? There's a there's mm -hmm. a limitation on on amount of jobs you get. So and you can get more, but then you're in the same situation as comfort, and then you don't work anymore on your own business. Um, so what I did, I was I. I Remember, I was working uh, in Tenerife, uh, also one of the Canary Islands. And I was working there on, on a freelance gig. And, um, and then I realized I was implementing Google Analytics for some uh, client. And I was like, this is bad. Like, there's no real good alternative. And like, I'm implementing Google Analytics again. Uh, and I already developed a, a little bit of a yeah, uh, a thing against uh, big data uh, collection companies uh, like Google and, uh, and Google Analytics. And then I realized, okay, let's let's uh, let's change this. Um, and I was having um, having this freelance gig, and uh, and then I also had like more uh, more of a feeling like, okay, now I have an idea, I can I can work it out. Uh, now I can also uh, stop this freelance gig. Um, and then I uh, focused on uh, on simple analytics, um, but at the same time, like I didn't know where to start. So I didn't know what to, uh, yeah, what to do, how to stay motivated, all those things. Uh, so I uh, was looking for an online community as well, um, and that's like 
I think a very important factor, like uh, having a community, uh, build it out in the open works for me very well. Um, so you get like, um, yeah, some kind of, um, yeah, how do you call it? Not commitment, but, um, Account accountability, accountability. Yeah. Perfect. So you get some accountability to keep going. Um, and it works very well. So I think for me, the feeling, uh, moving from that freelance gig, uh, previous, I told, uh, it was the job, but it was a freelance gig, um, moving from the freelance gig to, to my own business. Um, it was feeling like, okay, finally, I'm going to start it and I'm going to do it right. And you never know if it's going to be right. Like the first uh, company usually fails, <laughs> uh, but I had done like so many projects already. So I hope like, okay, this is maybe the 10th project and the 10th will probably succeed. Um, and that's what I say, right? Like if you do like a project, the first one is very likely not to succeed. Mm. Um, and if you do 10, you have maybe one that works. So, um, so yeah, that's what I did. You mentioned at the very beginning, there's so many things that come with being an indie founder. You've got the actual, you know, the building of the product, but then there's also the marketing, managing income and tax and, and, and customer acquisition. How did you learn all of that side of things? I mean, you learned development through, you know, your own interests in the previous job. What about the rest of all the stuff that comes with it? Did you learn it on, on the fly? Did you read any books, follow any blogs, or you just kind of figured it out as you went along? Yeah, there's, there's a few different aspects that you have to learn as an indie, indie founder. And one of the aspects is like you, you need to build your product. Um, so, and that's what something that I already knew. So I learned that uh, before I started my business. Um, but it still is not like the full picture of, of building a product. Um, something that I really needed to learn is uh, building a product that was okay and not perfect. Like mm. something that a lot of uh, founders uh, and especially uh, uh, with uh, founders with a technical background, um, are very, very, um, yeah, how do you call it? Find it hard to to stop at a certain moment and say like, okay, this product is finished. So not using the most, yeah, exactly. And not using the, the, the latest tools and all that kind of stuff. So within development, I already learned like how to develop, but what I needed to learn in my business is to stop at a certain moment, use the tools that I already know and use those to build my, my product. So that was, uh, that was one part that I really needed to learn. And I learned that by, by seeing uh, people doing it online saying like, okay, I need to uh, validate my product within, uh, let's say uh, a few months or a month. And then, you know, like if people are interested in your product. So I thought, okay, let's, let's do that as well. Let's, let's focus on, uh, on getting validated and, and getting your product out there instead of making it perfect from the start. So. Um, that's what I did for the development and building the part, uh, building the product. Uh, and then indeed you also have like, uh, doing the sales and marketing. Uh, there are so many examples, like, uh, like still like I'm, I'm just looking around and there are so many different tactics, so many different ways to do it. Um, but what made it easier for my business is that, uh, I care about privacy. So there's a lot of tactics that already are impossible to do because um, I don't want to track a user. I don't want to use retention. I don't want to use ads. Um, so there's so many things that I, that I don't want to use. Uh, so there's some logical uh, things that, that are left over, um, which I can focus on. But then still you have to choose, you have to choose. Like for example, uh, I recently added a, a little pop-up on my website um, where potential customers can say like, hey, uh, what is your uh, biggest challenge? And they can then pick for like, okay, I don't want a cookie banner or uh, I have to comply with privacy laws or mm. I want an easy to use platform. So they can pick what they want. And then I ask like, okay, what other tool do you use? Now, most of them say Google Analytics. Uh, and I ask their website. So then they will fill in the website and their email address. And then later, like it's all like what a customer does or a potential visitor or a visitor does for you. Um, and it's not like data I get from another party or from, from yeah. some smart, uh, marketing tool. It's all from uh, a user that is just visiting my website and they don't get into like some system that will spam them all the time. It will be just like me responding to that email, uh, and saying like, Hey, uh, we have this, uh, this product and it might help you because you answer these questions. Blah, blah. So then you have like, um, yeah, certain uh, marketing tools that, that work from 
a privacy perspective and also from uh, yeah a user perspective. And you maybe get a little bit less of customers because of that, but I'm fine with that because my whole business is around privacy mm. and I don't want to uh, have my landing page full with trackers and, and, and privacy invasive tools for my visitors, of course. Because it's yeah, it's basically the the image of my business that uh, gets hurt if I don't do that. Um, and then um, learning how to do taxes and how to do all the other stuff like content, uh, basically it's just doing. Um, it's it's not really uh, going into the books and try to find out how to do it best because there's no one way to do it. There are so many ways, so you just try and what works, yeah, you, know, you keep doing, and what doesn't work, you you stop doing. And um, I think that's the most important thing is is keep doing it. And um, and there and even if you like I don't know if you have a new idea or you here's a great podcast about how to get more customers, try it. And if it works for you, it works. And uh, and if you stay motivated on doing so, uh, please keep doing it. That that's basically my advice for uh, for if you want to do the marketing of your business, like. Try out so many things and and keep trying. It's one of the best things about being a solo founder is you have that freedom to quickly try things, to test something out in one day, see the result, adjust. There's no marketing team to go through, no committee, nothing. It's, no, you can just do it. Have that kind yeah. of, you just do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never thought about actually the limitations Simple Analytics would have in marketing due to being private, but you're right. That, that is something to consider. But you're right, it really does give you higher quality customers, I think, because they then see that you, you know, you, you walk the talk, you do what yeah. you talk about, even in your own marketing, and they trust you further because of that. Yeah. That is yeah. very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, you have to practice what you preach, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially in the privacy space, yeah. 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 What's the best thing about being self-employed? What do you enjoy the most about working for yourself? Um, well, it's funny that you ask that because it's very hard to... Um, like when I was, let me let me rephrase this a bit. When I was working for a bus, it was very easy for me to say like, okay, I want to work three days a week and not any anymore and not any longer. Um, I'll just go home after my eight hours or whatever. And uh, I will do my thing at night and meet friends or I don't know, do some hobby. And now I'm working uh, for my own business and it's way harder because uh, you have all the freedom that you do, but you're also responsible for uh, those next customers, for doing the customer support. You get an email uh, from a customer, you want to reply to it. You you get like uh, an alert on your system and you, you want to you wanna look what's going on. Or there's so many things that are um, that you're now responsible for. And if you're working for a business, you're usually responsible for, for one or two things. Like in, in my business or in my job, I was responsible for the front end um, code. So if that's if that's on production and there's there's a bug, yeah, I I will fix it. And if it's after office hours, of course I will fix it. But that's maybe an hour work, and then I will never have that like uh, for a few months because mm -hmm. that doesn't happen often. But it's very hard to do that uh, as a solo founder because you feel responsible for everything that you're doing. So yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think like. Recently, I'm starting to to force myself more into uh, things that I enjoy. So I started to do kite surfing uh, quite a bit, and it feels great. Uh, but I I really have to uh, yeah make me myself do it. Um, so I challenge myself to do this like every week and then during the week. So not on the weekends, like uh, but just like yeah, an advantage of a solo founder is you can do it. Uh, right in the middle of the week. You don't have like uh, uh, any other things that are super required for, for that certain day. So if you don't have meetings or appointments, you can just uh, go kite surfing. So that's what something that I do now. And it feels great because then you, you're just out, of, out on the water. It's like almost nobody is there. Um, and you come home and you're completely tired, but tired in a different way than, uh, than you will, would be tired from working, right? So yeah. It's it's good to uh, keep yourself also on a, on a, yeah how do you call it uh, a not professional or outside of work uh, scale and keep yourself like uh, yeah entertained or or do stuff that you really like to do because it is possible and if you don't do it now uh, you're probably not gonna do it later as well 
So keep on doing the fun stuff. Yeah, that's really good advice. It's so hard to force yourself to switch off from work when you're when you're working for yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> What's been the high point so far? Has there been like an accomplishment you've hit, or a career goal you've hit, or something you've done that you've thought, you know, this this feels incredible. This is why I started my own company. This is this is what it's all about. Has there been a high point yet? If I have to describe my high point in my business career i would say um it feels just great to have like a business that can sustain yourself and it's something that you work for like you work towards something that okay uh, i can live from my own business um but it's a little bit vague but once it, it you have this certain threshold or this this certain milestone um I, I sometimes realize like, oh, I'm super lucky with, with this position. Like I, I don't have to do freelance work. I don't have to um, have a part-time job. I can just live from, from a business that I, that I really enjoy. Uh, and obviously you don't enjoy it, all of it. Like you also have to do the taxes or you have to do some, some things you don't like. But most of it is just like, oh, everything that I do is for my own business. And, it, and that feels great. And that's like definitely, uh, uh, yeah, a great, a great uh, yeah achievement in in what i think uh yeah the business should mm. be it's too bad it's around, it's around money but it's more like um it's it's also some kind of that a feeling that you are independent now and yeah. maybe it's the same feeling when when you're living at your parents and then you finally go leave the house and you go live by yourself uh, I think that's a similar feeling. So you're you're then doing it on your own. And that's, yeah, that's a great feeling. I think a lot of people, when they get to the point where they are self-employed, you know, you're always looking ahead at the next thing. But the fact that you are independent financially is such a huge achievement. Like that's so, that, that yeah. is a high point on its own. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, I love the metaphor for um, moving out of your parents' house as well. It feels <laughs> just like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... What does your typical work day look like? You know, you can set your own schedule. You you work for yourself. Run run through an average day. You know, do you sleep in? Do you start work really early? What does your average day look like at work? My average day at work looks uh, a bit like um, all over the place. Um, but recently, I like like some, how my life works is I do something in a certain way and I do it a few times. Then I realize I don't want to do it like that, and then I'm changing it over to something else. So uh, what I'm saying now is probably not so uh, relevant for in a few months, but this is how I do it now. Uh, when I uh, wake up, um, my girlfriend usually is already awake. Uh, she starts working uh, in, uh, in the living room and then I'm, uh, I'm waking up slightly later. And then um, I go to my co-working space. I have a co-working space here in Amsterdam um, and I really love to have like some kind of workspace where you meet other people. Yes. So you, you are not like by yourself, uh, alone or always with the same person. Like it's, it's good to have like some, some workplace, even in the house, you have a different room where you work or something like that. Um, so that's how I start my day. I, I just bike to my, uh, um, uh, workplace, my co-working space. Uh, get some coffee. Um, usually, I, I plan some calls in the in the morning. So bas basically, uh, at nine o'clock or ten o'clock, um, so I can uh, so I have a motivation to be in the office on time, yeah. because otherwise I might be a little bit later in the office, like eleven or twelve. So it's great to have like this motivation to like set a call, uh, set an appointment at like nine or ten, and then I'm in the That's office. Very smart. <laughs> It works like a little, little high life hacks, but uh, yeah, it works. And then I just start working on uh, something that um, I put in my calendar uh, before. Um, so I usually uh, have my calendar with time slots and I just move time slots around uh, during the week uh, where they seem to fit best. Um, usually after a call, I will do something that's like not intensive for the brain. Um, so just some little coding or something. Um, and if I have like the, the first, uh, time slot of the day is t totally free, then I will, um, write some content or something that's, that's, that's for my brain a little bit tougher. Um, so that's how I feel my days. And then, uh, I try to, uh, stop working, uh, around six or seven, then I bike home, um, 
and uh, and start uh, relaxing at home or or doing some um, some uh, renovating the apartment with uh, I don't know stuff like that. Just like entertainment and something that's not uh, a digital uh, hobby, mm. like basically doing something with wood or do so, doing something to uh, to yeah entertain myself without the bits and the bytes. Always a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to give kind of your past self from a few years ago some advice with simple analytics, with working for yourself to make what you do now a bit easier, make your journey a bit easier, is there any advice you would give your past self? If I would give my future self advice when I was a few years younger, I would say uh, stop studying and start working on your own business. Like I spent too much time uh, finishing um, uh, yeah, some degree that you don't really need. Mm. And um like eventually i i i finished a non-related uh programming uh yeah how you call it course mm -hmm. uh basically for like in the netherlands it works like this if you uh, if you uh, study you get like a certain loan and if you finish your study uh, the loan will become like a gift uh, but if you don't finish the oh, study no. you have to pay back the loan um that's how it worked like a few years ago when i studied so I, I spent a lot of time finishing that study um, and I switched a few studies and whatever. Um, so eventually I finished that and yeah, it's it's good from a, a money perspective. Um, it saves you a few few thousand euros, not not that much. Um, but it's it's bad from a, a entrepreneurial uh, mm -hmm. uh, standpoint, I would say like um, I would I would have been happier I think if I didn't do the studying but I was working on my own business um, and I was always doing like side projects uh, next to my study and I enjoyed and enjoyed that way more but if I was like um, if I would have found like a community within Amsterdam or within the Netherlands where I could like um, work on my own project uh, and online businesses. Um, and I got motivation from other people around me, then I would definitely um, be way younger and already have a successful business, I would say. And that would have made me happier at that time, I think. I also believe that the time when you study is also important, like it's a certain age and uh, you meet new people and you are you're, you have a lot of time to meet new people, uh, which is also great. So it's it's not like that that whole time like is something that's bad in my life, but. I would say like if I could replace the studying with uh, building actual actual business, um, that would have been way better for me. Do you have any resources that you could recommend that helped you in this whole journey? Is there any kind of books, audiobooks, podcasts, websites, blogs, anything that you read that really kind of gave you, well, not necessarily read, listened to, came across, any sort of resources that you found very useful that you might recommend? Yeah, I have, I have a few resources, I think, that's, uh, that helped me uh, uh, yeah, work on my business. And one that I read like when I started uh, uh, creating my business was um, a book from James Watt. Um, he's the founder uh, or one of the founders of the BrewDog company. Uh, they have great IPAs. The Punk IPA is, mm. is uh, one of their famous uh, beers. And he writes about like starting a business and it's physical business, like he's selling actual beer. So it's not like a SaaS business or something, but he's, um, he's, he's telling about his marketing strategy and, and he's really thinking outside of the box. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a very nice way of writing that really appealed to me. And he, they, for example, like, I don't know, uh, bought like a big old, uh, army tank, uh, drove it like, uh, in London square uh and said like we're gonna change uh, things around here well it's obviously uh, very illegal to do stuff like that but it set them like in the spotlight uh directly yeah. in the whole whole town of london and outside of it so it was a, a great smart technique to to get into the picture um and he describes as as uh as building a brand as um that you need to find an audience uh that can believe in something so you need to sell um yeah, he has better wording for it than I do, but um, sell a mission, sell sell something that people can uh, uh, jump on, like, okay, go for, we, we're going to fight this, or we're going to do this, uh, we're going to change this in the world. And my mission is to to change uh, the world into a more privacy-friendly place. 
And if you can have people jump on the train and believe in your mission, then uh, they are also likely to believe in your brand and um, yeah, be loyal to your to your mission and your brand. So he's not selling beers, but he's selling like we're gonna change the world with good beers and we're gonna take over all the old breweries that are like just brewing shitty beers. We're gonna change the world. Uh, and of course, changing the world is just yeah, like a tiny bit of the world. But like I really uh, uh, yeah enjoyed reading that book. So that was uh, that was definitely a great inspiration for uh, starting my business. And another uh, inspiration uh, that I still check regularly is uh, marketing examples. Um, mm -hmm. Harry has some great examples, and he always writes them very clear, um, just like with a with a little yeah a little box like this is the right way, this is the wrong way. You see the difference? Okay, point across. So it's like super clear how he communicates um, yeah his examples. So that's that's also a great great source of content that you can check regularly. Uh, subscribe to his newsletter; it's it's really good. Um, and yeah, that's basically the two things that that really helped. Uh, yeah, me running my business. What are you working on next? What goals do you have? Is there anything exciting on the on the roadmap that you want to tease a little bit? What is next for Simple Analytics is uh, is something that um, I'm really excited about. Um, there, there are a few things, but I, I will, um, I will name the, the first, the first thing, and maybe I hint to the next one. Um, but the first thing is like, like what is important for so many businesses is, is that you, that you know how good is my page, um, and what is the quality of my page. And within an analytics tools, like there are so many analytics tools, it's not really clear what the quality is of a page. Um, so you can see how many visits a page got. Like for example, you can um, see like okay, this page about um, this certain blog post uh, got like thousand views last uh, last week. Um, so it's it's a really good blog post, but you don't really know that. Maybe someone shared it on LinkedIn or or on Twitter, and that's because uh, you got like those thousand views. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the blog post itself. So what we are building at the moment is uh, having an indicator next to your uh, page view list. And that indicator shows like uh, this blog post or this page is good content and this is um, uh, worse content. Uh, and it doesn't use any uh, data points like uh, page views or anything like that. It uses like two, uh, two data points, uh, basically how far someone scrolled on your page. So if you have a long blog post, it measures like, okay, they scroll to half of it. Well, then they probably didn't see the, the whole blog post. So it's probably not a quality uh, reader or a quality read. Um, and how long someone is on the page. So if someone is uh, reading your blog post for five minutes and they scroll all the way down um, to the last word, it's probably a good blog post. And if a lot of people are doing this, it will probably count to like, okay, this blog post is really good. So in that way, you can calculate uh, how well your content is doing instead of like how well your content is doing uh, traffic wise. So I think that will be like a major uh, difference in analytics for a lot of content creators, um, for for uh, article writers. Um, like you, if you have content on your website, it's super relevant to know like, okay, uh, people, uh, yeah like this page more uh, than my other page. So you you all of a sudden start uh, yeah, having a different metric that you didn't have before. So that's something I'm really excited about. And I know a lot of customers will, will be really happy with this new feature. Um, and there's also some somewhere in the future, we are going to do something with, uh, with alerts. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about that. So where can people follow you and your work online? Where's the best place to keep up with what you're up to? Um, well, for me, it's it's usually that I post on Twitter. So uh, Adrian V. Rossum, um, that's my Twitter handle. Uh, everything that I do online, I usually post on, on Twitter. I don't really have other channels. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I have a technical blog post, but but that's super technical. So uh, it's, it's ma mainly Twitter. And if I think it's interesting for uh, people, I will share it on uh, on Twitter.